evening, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Staff Sergeant Samuel Kroll with the North Dakota Army National Guard's Public Affairs Office. And this is the Guards Podcast. Today, I have a special guest, Nicholas Jessen. How's it going, bud? Good, how are you? Oh, fantastic. Man, it's been a hot minute since like we've just talked. You've been like traveling a bunch with your you know previous job and even current job. You're like, Shh, dude, I saw you at UND taking photos. Yeah, yeah, a lot of events and a lot of family vacations too recently. So. Nice. Well, yes. it's the holidays. Got to bust them out as soon as you mm-hmm. possibly can. Yes. So we've known each other for quite some time actually both be bismarck high school grads i'm 2015 you said you're 26 2017 oh 20 okay so 2017 so yeah do, like and look at us now right <laughs> like where are we at so um so kind of talk let's talk a little bit about you know okay you're bhs grad yes. um you were super into art i know that's how you and i kind of first met on the basis of was doing mm-hmm. some drawings and stuff like that so what made you want to join the military? Well, all th- yeah, all throughout high school, I was into art, and that's what I wanted to do in college. So I was going to college for art, and I wanted, I mean, the college benefits, you know, are pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. It, they're fantastic. But I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy that says that's why I joined. I've always wanted to join, and so I just kind of joined. <laughs> You yeah. know, the, a recruiter really just needed to say one right thing to me, and he did. And then I joined, and then I was pursuing art mm-hmm. um, in college, and then decided not to want to do that. And then I like, moved into like athletic training and in yeah. business. And then um, yeah, eventually you worked at wellness for a little bit, didn't you? I still do. Yes, still do as a oh, personal sh- trainer. Sh- yes, yes. Um, but yeah, the military eventually has become my full time, and still, still gonna go back to college. But yeah, as of right now. This is what I do full time. Love it. Yeah. Well, and, and so you do what full time? So I work up with uh, recruiting and retention, and mm-hmm. more specifically in the marketing department right now. Okay. So um, love it. Love it. recruiting, marketing, um, dealing with it. Um, anything in the guard really, you know, is pretty pretty fun. You well, know? yeah, and that kind of matches up with like what you wanted to do in high school, and then what you're doing now as a personal trainer. Like, if you think about it. Like marketing has a lot to do with graphic design and, you know, Mm. just product stuff. And then as a personal trainer, you're selling yourself in a way where you can train somebody. So it all kind of works together in an interesting way. Yeah, I think uh, the military really interested interested me more than Mm -hmm. like most uh, because of my personal training, like Mm -hmm. like to work out, you know, kind of like the challenge, kind of like. You know the workout aspect of the military. So. Yeah, if you're if if you're listening online right now, I have a beefcake in front of me, and I'm looking like a <laughs> small skinny stick. So no way. <laughs> yeah, if it's if his voice isn't sounding like sounding enough like it, it's it's physical too. So <laughs> <laughs> well, and well, that's that's awesome. You know, and you and I kind of have a similar story and how we kind of you know we were going to do art. Mm-hmm. Like I had a music major going on. I actually joined the band, so I was able to carry on through it with the military. And then, you know, working at recruiting and retention for a while, um, left and started doing like an admin job. And, and now I'm here. We're doing pretty much the same thing you're doing over at recruiting, mm-hmm. um, which is just fantastic. I mean, we've both been in some similar jobs and now we're both yeah. kind of happy. I, I mean, I think I'm happy. Yeah. Like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's super cool to see like us kids are like I go back in my mind. And I'm like, OK. Man, who's this kid again? And the last last thing I can think of, you know, is us in high school. Yeah. And then we show up together. And Everyone. It's like, oh yeah, my god, what's up? You know, <laughs> we're all grown up now. Right. So, yeah, that's like the one thing I've always appreciated the most about the military is that you're gonna have some fond memories from like the beginning. You know, when you first got in, you're gonna have awesome things, and then mm-hmm. as you get older, those people will you know get older with you, and then right. ten years from now, I mean, I've been in the guards for almost ten years now. Mm-hmm. And, I go back and I'm like, holy cow, I remember when I first grew my mustache, you yeah. know, or I first yep. started doing this with my hair because of the military or, yep. or vice versa. Yeah, it's it's a lot just like high school where, like, you look back at high school and see how, you know, you grow with a lot of people, Yeah. you know, and then same with the military, you know, you grow close with a lot of people, grow in their careers with them and then see, like, what they become is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, dude, your career is, I've always, like, just idled how you've gone and done your career so again like you're still doing personal training and you know you're doing the temporary or you're being that 
ADOS person with recruiting and retention and you're holding that down like a fort. You had recently just got married, you know, yes. like, and now your mm -hmm. wife actually, like, she got helped you at an event recently, I heard, at UND? Yes, yes. I've been bringing her along with events to help out photography because um, me and her both have a passion for it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a really great duo there. But Yeah, I mean, you can't beat that. Um, yeah. That's just fantastic. So you're in this full time, but what's, like, your actual MOS? Like, what do you do paid? And I think you have a little bit of a track. Uh, so you did something before, and now you're doing something different now. Yeah, so when I joined, I joined as a 92 Yankee, which is supply, mm -hmm. and then just recently, I switched to 92 Fox, which is a fueler, and I'm in an aviation unit, mm -hmm. um, and aviation fueling is where it's at, and the biggest thing why I wouldn't want to go EGR mm -hmm. is because I love fueling oh. and aviation so much. Yeah. You know, my unit, you can't beat. I'm in deco on Fargo, and <laughs> it's yeah. really hard to beat, and... I mean, I enjoy fueling, so I would like to at least do it a little bit longer before, mm -hmm. you know, I would, like, mm -hmm. leave, so. Well, and I can't even imagine. I've been underneath, you know, a hawk once or twice taking photos of them, and the oh. adrenaline rush that yeah, you get from just the downforce is yeah. just, man, it's like. <laughs> just, all, just all the people in aviation, all the things you get to see and do, it's, it's really unmatched. And we have a smaller unit. Like, there's yeah. only, like. What, like 40 to 60 of us. So, I mean, we're really tight, you know, really yeah, close. Yeah, the whole so, family, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would agree with you. It's, the band is the similar way. If, if you're listening online, like, so D Company is an aviation unit in Fargo. And I'm with the 180th Army Band, which is out of Fargo as well. And, like, small group, small vibes, like, family vibes. Um, it's just a good time. And, yeah, 100%. I didn't want to go AGR because I didn't want to leave my unit. I yes. love those guys. Now mm -hmm. the pay is, like, you look at it and you're like, Ugh. I could, but you know, family is that's number one with anything you do. And again, money doesn't buy happiness, but it, it helps. <laughs> right, right. I'm only I'm only 24, so I le I think I at least have a couple more years where I can hang out in my unit, you know, before yeah. I make a bigger decision to you know move somewhere. But for right now, just gonna yeah. And there's and that's we talked to you know relative to kind of talked about how much time you spend with the people and the time that it takes you know from mm -hmm. start to finish. And we're just at the midway point, you know, and right. there's so much more to happen. Like tomorrow they could say, hey, we're going to do this. And you're like, all right, cool. I'm going to D.C. for or whatever. Or especially with aviation, you guys are constantly right. moving. So and there's so much stuff that you can do that you can stay where you're at and still move forward. There's so many opportunities that will happen within that give or take time period of you technically staying stagnant. So. Yeah, and I mean, I've been in for seven years, and I've known guys that have just come in, you know, like a year and a half, and from they when they've come in to mm -hmm. now, you know, they changed, and we've done so many things together, and mm -hmm. there's there's just a lot of things that we get to do together, and you get to see change, and it's it's really cool. Yeah, what's what's the most interesting change that you've seen since you've been in? Um. Well, one little one, just because I like tattoos, is like they changed the tattoo rule. Yep. So, yep. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, wish they could, you know, somehow have a beard. But, <laughs> yeah. but you know. <laughs> I, I said won't. that with Nate Rivard in my last podcast. I was like, yeah. 2025, baby, let's go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, um, hopefully. But the biggest change, I mean, maybe not within the military, but, like, the longer you get in, the more you know, you know, you know how to do stuff. You get more mm -hmm. comfortable because mm -hmm. the military is pretty, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, like cut and paste, like boom, 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 rudimented, yeah. regimented, like, yeah, it can be pretty intimidating for others too. So, oh, 100%. you know, once, once you just get used to it and get the routine down, um, you know, you change to where you're more comfortable, you know, with being in, like talking to people in the military, you know, just all aspects, you just get more comfortable. Yeah, it's not like <laughs> it's, I've, I remember, and this is a funny story. So I got back from basic training and AIT, and oh yeah, we're gonna open up that basic training <laughs> AIT book of worms right now. Um, so I got back to my unit, and I was walking down the hall of the Fargo Armory, and I immediately snapped to attention, and then parade rest because there was a sergeant, mm -hmm. and I, I first saw, uh, first saw, I, well, I saw my first sergeant in the the one eighty army band. He's like, "What are you doing? What's your name?" And I'm like, "Ha, ha, ha!" And then he's <laughs> right. like, "Eddie's. My name is, you know, my name is Sergeant Frazee." And gave me a handshake, and I was like, "I've never seen this reaction before, anyway." Yeah. So, like you're saying, you know, it's 
it's intimidating at first and it it's is. supposed to be, you know, yeah. you go to basic training and AIT and you got somebody that's just trying to mold you into what you are going to be. And that mm-hmm. is a soldier first and foremost. And, um, at the end of it, you're kind of like, where am I at now? And then you get back to your unit and, you know, get back to good old North Dakota yep. and everyone's, how's it going, bud? You know, <laughs> or, you know, it, it's just, it's, that's probably one of the most interesting experiences yeah. and it'll take a little bit of time for you to get, get used to it. Like you're saying, I think we all come back like a little bit high strung right. and you're like, oh, I don't want to mess up. Don't mm-hmm. want to do anything wrong. Um, and then your senior people. And thankfully, I mean, you and I kind of came in on the, um, back end of the, you know, global war on terrorism Yes, we did. and, um, the leaders that we've had, I mean, most of them deployed overseas to the middle East and those were our mentors. And now think about it. We're like, the mentors mm, technically we're getting up there yeah you know, it's like oh you're the senior guy so now yeah. you don't want to be that person <laughs> so yeah it's, it's it gets intimidating but i think overall like you're saying it, you, you yeah, eventually you get, get to that point where it's yeah. just good yeah you butter up to it so but that's like in any job i mean you oh, go yeah. into a job it's intimidating you don't know what to do mm-hmm. with the military it's a little more you know just with the uh, title but yeah there's, you, there's customs and courtesies and stuff like that mm-hmm. but we can still have conversation and and be normal, you know, yeah. in a sense. Yeah, we're soldiers, and there's time and place for everything. But yeah. titles, yeah, customs and courtesies, all that stuff. But once you get to know the people you work with, like you're saying, right. you kind of butter up to them a little bit, yeah. and they just eventually get better. So Some of the best leaders I've had, high-ranking leaders, you know, treat, you know, whatever rank you are, the same respect as, you know, any other rank, mm-hmm. you know, and that, that goes so far. So, um, yeah, just respect is a lot. You yeah, know, with the military. Uh, and, so. and yeah, it, customs and courtesies, like you respect the rank, mm-hmm. um, you know, when needed in X, Y, and Z. Um, and, but overall, like, yeah, you treat everyone the same. And that's okay. in and out of the military, thankfully. Yes. So, so it, we, you and I both do photography. And I'm just going to ask you this quick question What's your favorite type of photography? Mm. Is it like black and white? Is it landscape? Well, I know, I think my wife's for sure recently, she loves to do anything with animals. Okay. I haven't gotten to do anything with animals. Um, just go I, to the zoo. Just go to the zoo. True. <laughs> or oh, oh, your dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey. Yeah, trust um, me. I don't, I like, I mean, I personally feel like I'm really good with just people, you know, like color portraits, just like the typical. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I do mostly. And that's what, you know, I enjoy a lot. So I would say. Nice. Yeah. Well, and, I'm trying to think. So, like, I do. I just said the word that I'm not supposed to say. I keep saying like, I'm sorry, everyone online. I keep saying like, I need to stop it. Um, I would agree with you. Like, portraits are awesome, and I do that full time here. Um, and I wonder, you and I should go out sometimes. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. let's go to the zoo. Let's find a time to yeah. go to the zoo and take some photos of animals and. Or like this picture amazing. I'm uh, <laughs> looking at right here, like just the side of a building. Like, I mean. If I would choose anything else, it'd just be, I don't know what this kind of... Architecture kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I feel like it's super... I mean, you can do a lot, you know. To the normal person, it may not look cool, but if you look, you know, every little thing, you know, with, like, how you edited it or whatever, like, you can make it look pretty cool. Yeah, you know, and we can kind of caveat to that, actually. Editing has changed so much since, I mean... When I was younger, my mom was a photographer. She would mm-hmm. show me, okay, you got to develop film. And I was like, oh, what, am I, what, are, what are you <laughs> right. doing? You know. Yep. And now AI has, I mean, even since, I mean, from yeah. 2015 to 2017 to now, AI, you know, I just changed my cover photo of my dog. And I mm-hmm. used AI generation to generate like a char- charcuterie board and a fire pit and then a turkey looking at the charcuterie board of the turkey. Like, yeah, and I was in awe because I like don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> well, and, and, and it's, yeah, we, we talk about like, yeah, you want to do all these different avenues or these different photography spots. It all mm-hmm. comes down to training, you know, yeah. no different than you as a personal trainer. You know, if I want, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger biceps, I got to be curling, you know, every True. other day. You know, mm-hmm. if I want to have, you know, you know, good photography or low light photography you just got to yeah, go out practice. and shoot um go out and test it and you know the best part about it is is um you're gonna fail a million times mm-hmm. and the best part about it is it's gonna be like you'll fail but then once you get that one photo or you get that one pr yep. you're just like hooked and then you're, it's, <laughs> you know it's like 
being under a Blackhawk when you're fueling Literally. it, and it's like yep. all the down pressure, and you're just like, ah, you yeah, know, adrenaline rush. Benching 225 the first time, you know, like, <laughs> oh, yep. <laughs> yeah. But if I'm like 180. <laughs> that's okay. But yeah, no, I agree. That adrenaline when you first get it. Yeah, and I think that's the best part about, I mean, anything that you do, and that goes to stuff in the military too. I mean, oh my gosh, the amount of times I've been yelled at just saying, nope, that's wrong, and you're like, you get so frustrated <laughs> and then you do it the one time and he's like okay that's right and then the next time you're doing yeah. it he's not checking your work because you know how to do it now mm-hmm. and then you do it and then you notice your younger guy or your you know new new person in the unit and he mm-hmm. does it wrong you're like hey fix that and they're like Arr! you know and the, yep. the cycle continues the cycle. The cycle continues mm-hmm. but then you get you know this fantastic subject matter expert in photography or x y and z and everyone can i mean i need to learn a ton of stuff too with ai um, to kind of caveat back to that, you know, Photoshop beta just came out, which is like, first off, scary that you can do this stuff. Yes, because, extremely. I mean, social media right now, and I'm not going to get down that avenue, but no. like um, overall, like what you can do is insane. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my gosh, you used to have to spend 30 minutes to do any kind of face correcting, you know, take yeah. away acne or take mm-hmm. away um, some kind of sunspot or whatever. And now you just spend one click of a mouse and use a you know a dial and it just yeah, completely takes can it away. Make anyone look like like anything or anyone like yeah. it's the same. <laughs> yeah, I want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> That's really <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. And I, when it comes to photography, I think that's the one part. And I mean, in anything, you're just always going to learn stuff. So um, in the military, it's beneficial. You know, we get you're part of a team, and those people are so diverse, X, Y, and Z. And, you know, you're going to learn a million things from every single person. Mm -hmm. I've learned leadership from this person. Tons. And then I've learned how to make a a knot, you know, with Mm -hmm. a a steering column. You know, that's not happening. But, you know. You you get a bunch bunch of knowledge. Well, I think it's about time for us to take a little bit of a break. So we'll be back with you in just a moment. The next greatest generation is now. By joining the North Dakota Army National Guard, you continue to live life with your goals in mind. Whether choosing to go to school or work at your chosen profession, your service in the North Dakota Army National Guard allows you to build your future your way. The North Dakota Army National Guard allows you to serve your community and your nation while enjoying life right here at home. Live here, serve here. Join the North Dakota Army National Guard today. And we're back with Nick Jessen. How's it going? Good. <laughs> All right. So we alluded to, you know, kind of your upbringing going into the military from high school now. And then we talked a little bit about photography and what your wife does and what you're doing currently. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about the fitness side of the military. You allude to, you know, you do uh, personal training. And you and I both um, actually started in the military with the old physical fitness touch, which was the APFT. And now we're to the ACFT, the Army Combat mm-hmm. Fitness Test. So, w- what's something you like? Or, or like, do you like the changes? How do you feel about it? Yeah. Um, so, majority of people want it easier, and I would say that the old one was harder to pass, but easier to max, and this one's easier to pass, okay, but harder to fail. Mm-hmm. So, if you know you're looking to max it, you know you got to put in a little more effort but yeah. um me personally i like it the new one the acft because mm-hmm. i mean it does simulate more you know live action stuff that oh, you'll 100%. do you know it's other than body. yeah other than push-ups sit-ups and a run like mm-hmm. you know anyone can do that so anyone can join the military no you know you got to do other things yep. um so i like it a lot um i personally haven't been able to max it i don't try to personally um but I know a lot of people that do, and are just super fit, and um, they do max it, but it's a lot harder than the older one. So it, the ACFT com- is a com- combination of six different events. You've got the deadlift, uh, the plank, you've got the sprint drag carry, um, you got the ball throw, the ball throw, and the uh, push up, and then a two mile run. Yes. Um, and yeah, I I hundred percent agree with you. You know, it's easier to pass, but holy cow, trying to like max that thing oh, oh my, gosh. my gosh you're doing the two mile run at the same time you're doing the apft mile run yeah and that i mean you gotta think so 
I, my worst event, and I hate it, um, is the sprint drag carry. Like, oh, yeah, your it, quads just get oh, shot. Your quads are dead by the end <laughs> yeah. of it, and they're like, "All right, time to plank," and you're like, "Ah," oh, you and know. Then time to run. Like. Exactly. <laughs> well, and and the, that's the f- I think that's the most beneficial part about this is like you were saying, mm-hmm. it's related to combat. I yes. mean, yeah, you can do push-ups, you can do sit-ups, you can do a two-mile run, but you would get these guys that you know maybe wouldn't do too hot on the APFT, but they're like overall fit in a right. sense where okay, you want that guy to lift that massive you know casualty or whatever or, you know mm-hmm. that casualty. Well, guess what? I'm gonna pick the biggest brawniest person to go carry that person out. You know, yep. And and so that's the benefit with it. I think is that yeah, it's it's a little different and it takes more time to do it. Um, but like an overall like, come on, like mm-hmm. a lot of people are changing the ways that they or a lot of departments have changed the ways that they're doing PT tests with all different alternatives, et cetera. And I think mm-hmm. a main proponent of that, um, too, is that um, with this being an overall fitness thing, it kind of makes people realize that, OK, I need to train everything. I'm not just going to train my yeah. push ups and my sit ups and then try to pass my run, you know, and that's an unhealthy thing. So the nice part about the ACFT that a lot of people don't see is that it just generalizes good fitness and an overall standpoint. Because a lot of people, I mean, I remember back in the day, and I've done it, like two months before, and I'm like, I got to start running. Because <laughs> yep. if I don't run, I'm going to die during the two mile. Um, right. And But that would cause a lot of impact injury, you know, mm-hmm. because your body would get so attuned to being in the off season yep. that now you got to go run a two mile mm-hmm. and the pra- the best part about this ACFT is that it makes you work it out um, yeah it might be easier to pass but the impact to your body it's and it's going to make you work out everything yeah um, there was a girl that was in the active army that came up to me in the gym a while back ago mm-hmm. and she was uh, crushing everything except the ball throw of all things, mm-hmm. you know, because she had weak, like a weaker upper body and shoulders. She crushed the push ups, but um, the ball throw was her issue. So, you know, obviously it needs to work on that, but it's, you know, shows that, like, yeah, you need to have, you know, a strong boost of energy or like, yeah. strong shoulders, you know, not just mm-hmm. a strong, you know, core and then crank out a bunch of push ups and run. So, yeah, it makes you think about, and, uh, and that's the best part about. You, th- you say ball throw, and somebody from the outside is like, what the heck is a ball throw? And you're like, well, <laughs> you actually, I mean, if you're going to train for the ball throw, you're not just going to throw a ball. Like, yeah, you're going to no. train quads, explosives, you yep. know, you're going to train cat, you know, because form. Again, mm-hmm. it goes into that overall fitness. And as a fitness trainer, how do you get to where you want to be? Well, mm-hmm. you're not going to show up to the gym and pump or i use the analogy okay i want to look like arnold schwarzenegger and have the watermelon size of a bicep you know no you got to do this and this and this and this because your body's going to burn fat completely different than somebody else Mm -hmm. it's it's interesting again it kind of over it covers that overall fitness when it comes to yeah it may be easier to pass but you're not going to hurt yourself and that's the main thing we had a lot of i mean basic training i think we had oh yeah there is there was a lot. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that kind of goes into like our generation in general. Like, mm-hmm. okay, 1945, right? Those right. guys fit as heck, you mm-hmm. know, like just crazy. But at the same time, they didn't have access to McDonald's all the time, you know? True. Or they didn't have, <laughs> mm-hmm. they didn't have the type of transportation we did, X, Y, and yeah. Z. So now we're kind of molding into a generation. And that's not, to, you know, we talk about it's reducing the standard, but I think the standards haven't changed. The standards have only gotten more you know like yeah now especially no. overall fitness is one thing but you just talk about like requirements okay you know mm-hmm. all of that stuff it's so different now it is and like i work out in the mornings and i see a bunch of high schoolers you know 15 16 17 18 year olds in the morning grinding you know so they they definitely want you know people want to get back into fitness you know yeah so, especially after turkey day <laughs> oh my god and christmas coming up <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's like it's it is probably the number one most challenging thing as a person in uniform is to get through Christmas and or excuse me get through the holidays around this time Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and then uh, Christmas without gaining a pound. Yeah, I <laughs> no shot for me. I've, I failed. I, I'm definitely an eater. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, what is your worst? I guess not worst, but what's your most hated event on the ACFT? Like, what don't you like to do? <laughs> so, like, right away, mine was the sprint drag carry because my quads and knees were literally just gone. Mm-hmm. And then having to run, like, mm-hmm. it was just jello. Um, the past couple times, though, it's gotten better to where, like, 
my legs aren't as shot. Mm-hmm. Um, boy, I don't know. Like, as weird as it says, like, maybe the ball throw too myself because I'm just shorter. If you're taller, you can pretty much rock it yeah, pretty easily. But if you're short, you the really got to. kings are. <laughs> yeah, you really got to um, use some technique. And I went to BHS uh, a couple months ago, and we did the ACFT with a bunch of high schoolers. Mm-hmm. And they were all just killing the ball throw. And a guy that was helping us did it, and he was also killing it. And then they saw me, and they were like, let's, you have, let's see you do it. Yeah. So I did it, and I got, like, maybe a 6. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. So then I did it again, I got, like, a 10. But, like, I had rage fueled me <laughs> for that one. <laughs> yeah, I was quite mad, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we've – so you've done the ACFT there. I think there was a couple times we, we would go back – when I was at recruiting, I think it was, uh, I forget which recruiter it was, but we went to BHS and we would just do the prep yep. drill. Like, and it was me and the other, uh, me and one other guy mm-hmm. uh, that worked with recruiting at the time with the recruiter. And um, we went in there and uh, the school teacher was like, hey. And I was like, yeah, what up? So you're going to do what? Well, we're just going to do the preparation drill. We don't want to mm-hmm. hurt him too much, you know, because right. there's a competition. But, you know, BHS is, does, does like a block schedule, you know, so it's, um, you yeah. know, you've got a different class. Uh, at a different time every other day Mm -hmm. and you know we're doing this gym class and i think we ended up with like part of the soccer team for one class a good group of football players towards the end and then we ended up getting like the demonettes um and another one and the Mm -hmm. teacher was like hey i want you to be like a drill sergeant and i'm like (laughs) what am i are you like is that okay Mm -hmm. so i remember okay sounds good showed up and (laughs) <laughs> and back then we didn't do the ACFT because that wasn't for record. We did the right. APFT and the, yeah, what you're saying about like younger competition and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, those oh. kids, I mean, hold put up or shut up, you know, like yeah. you show up and you're in uniform and you're like, all right, these guys. Right. Just, and I, I don't, when I was there um, at the same event that I did the ball throw, th- these kids were like crushing mm-hmm. the sprint tray carry. Like they were getting in on like a minute 40, just like, record-breaking time that i've never <laughs> seen um bunch of gazelles man. yeah which is super impressive but then you got to think about it let's do two minutes of planks and then running too so yeah. so would, they do I the would, whole did they do the whole acft we did everything except for um the two mile run oh. we didn't do it in order but yeah they were absolutely crushing the sprint tray carry but Let's see how they would do after the two mile run. Mm-hmm. I, I think so. I actually attended a uh, recruit sustainment, uh, you know, RSP drill. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what it was a little bit ago. Um, and you know, you get your people that are in the RSP program that have enlisted, mm-hmm. haven't gone to basic. People that have came back from basic, whatever. And there was one guy, <laughs> and his I called him Blue T-shirt <laughs> because I didn't know his name, and he was wearing a blue T-shirt. Fair so enough. you know. Um, he got halfway through his two mile after he was done with the ACFT and I could just tell he was like, I hate my life, man. (laughs) And he started to walk and I kind of got up to him and I'm, you know, just, I got a camera in my hand. I was doing a video (laughs) for him, you know? And I looked at him and I said, if you keep, I was like screaming, like, don't like, don't walk at least like five seconds, get back running. Cause as soon as you start to walk, you're going to, you're not, yeah, you're not going to want to run again. And that's the thing with the ACFT is that, I mean, with any PT test and you alluded to it, it's a mental thing, you know, like Mm -hmm. A lot of the times it's yourself getting into it. Like, is it too hard? Even yeah. if you, it's not a much of a challenge, that's still mental. Like, okay, mm-hmm. well, max it if you think it's easy because that's a mental barrier too. So this, as soon as I went up to him, I kept badgering it for it. So mm-hmm. I think, like, I was like, the cameraman's beating you. So I started to, like, <laughs> I, like, sped walk, and I was beating him. And I was like, the camera guy's beating you, and I'm walking. And he's oh. like, oh. I lit a fire on yeah, him. <laughs> well, I, so the rest of, the eight, or rest of that two mile, he didn't stop. Very nice. Yes. And that's, I mean, that's the benefit with it, too, is that, I mean, yeah, it's going to suck, and you're going to have funny jokes. Right. I mean, there's been a couple of times where I've seen somebody, you know, like you said, I threw a six on the ball throw. <laughs> and then this kid was like, that's all you got? You know, you get mad. Yeah. Next thing you know, maxing or something. So yeah. a lot of the times when it comes to fitness, you just need somebody. So, I mean, just to push you. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, and that's, I think that's one of the nicest thing about um this organization we give each other crap <laughs> yeah but also at the same time it's because we genuinely care right um and sometimes that yeah it takes a, if you're this new guy and you're like getting screened at mm-hmm. or whatever but like you said in the past you know eventually you kind of get into the swing of things and you realize right. how it all works and you, acft is no different yeah you you really get to see who like everyone cares about you during the acft everyone's cheering for everyone even if you're a pt stud right when the planks wait right when you're starting to plank people are like <laughs> 
let's go, you know, <laughs> they're cheering for you. So, yeah, as, as much uh, crap as people give, you know, yeah. during the ACFT, you really get to see how much people do. Yeah. You. I've seen like a couple of funny memes online about the plank. Um, like I've seen when you do the plank, you're supposed to be on a straight line. You know, once you get a, a bunch of people, oh, yeah. sometimes you start facing towards each other. <laughs> yep. And so I was planking in front of this person and um, I looked at him up and I was like, all right, we got 30 seconds. Want to <laughs> play a game of tic-tac-toe? <laughs> Hey, yeah, kill the just time. To, well, mm-hmm. just to max it, and we were like, "Well, I don't oh. want to. I don't want to max it." I'm like, well, how much you got? I think I got another ten, whatever. And I was like, "Okay, let's play tic tac toe." <laughs> and I didn't want to max it, so yeah, in this in the gra or in the sand, we just tic tac toed. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the instructor's like, "What are you doing? You were gonna max it." And I'm like, "I passed." You yeah. Know? Uh, that's probably not the. If you're doing the, if you're doing your PT test for anyone listening, do what you could do. Don't hurt yourself. You know, yes. pace yourself. That's another benefit. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that we didn't really talk about is the pacing of the ACFT. You know, you want to max everything if you want to max it. But, like, you know you – I mean, you know you – know, yourself knows your fitness level more than anyone else. So, like, me, I'm going to beat the crap out of the ball throw. Mm-hmm. And I'm also going to do really well on the plank. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, well, the sprint drag carry is not my favorite one. So how am I going to do those workouts mm-hmm. or perform on those workouts to make sure – that come the plank or the two mile or whatever alternate event, if you do one, uh, is the best it possibly can. Yeah. Um, some guy like newer guys in my unit, um, that, you know, don't really work out a whole lot or aren't fond of working out. Mm-hmm. Like the first events, the deadlift and they like max it, which is like what? 300 some pounds. Yep. yep. And I mean, they are gassed beyond belief, yeah. you know, for the whole thing. And they're like on their knees, you know, yeah. wanting to puke. And I'm like, dude, you should, if you can't, you know, yeah. Max the deadlift three times, or if you barely can, just setting yourself up for failure. So yeah, well, and it's yeah. Again, it's that 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 sentence or that sentiment we said earlier. Like the standard hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. The expectation yes. of meeting that standard has changed in a, in a way where like okay, you gotta think a little bit here. You know, mm-hmm. um, they're not just sending us over to <laughs> fight wars. You know, like yeah. you gotta think. You know, yep. so you do. Um, that's awesome, man. Uh, the ACFT, dude. Oh, mm-hmm. it's been a it's been a hot minute. Um, since that initial change because that was announced during COVID, I think. And then yeah, I think now that it's finally for record. Yeah. It's just awesome. Mm-hmm. So all right. Well we've talked about Bismarck High. We've talked about photography. We've now talked about the ACFT a little bit. I'm kind of curious myself, like what are some of your favorite aspects or like duties that you do during your full-time job oh so i mean obviously this podcast i mean this is pretty cool well and that's the thing so the podcast itself was um an initial thought of okay uh how do we reach and we talked about this in the uh, in a, in a first podcast draft that i had done was how do we reach an audience where it's not just the younger generation or the older generation you know and mm-hmm. we're basically what we're trying to do and we've talked about this a little bit is that the military has changed in a way. And so, so the same thing with the processes. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was, or when you and I probably first got in, we're like, what the heck is public affairs or what is, oh, yeah. what is the social media thing that they're doing? And we had our own opinions on it. Um, and it was no different than COVID. Um, we, um, like it made us realize, okay, we need to be able to virtually mm-hmm. have meetings because well, guess what? I can't be in front of you right now. Yeah. So having to do that, uh, realizing that also made us look into how do we go about refreshing or mm-hmm. even modernizing how we do um, social media. And the same thing goes with recruiting. Like recruiting has been killing it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they've done so many different things. I think I've done, a, or I've actually been a part of a couple of their um, works with your guys' marketing team, which is awesome. Um, and so that's kind of the hope with the podcast is that, you know, podcasts are still relative are oh, yeah. to society now. They're I mean, very popular. You're going to drill, you know, and that's the reason why we're calling it the guards because um, this is a podcast that you can kind of listen in whether you're in the military or not in the military. Mm-hmm. But the hope is is that we can kind of just talk and have like a just a conversation about what the guards is actually like. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is you know one of our first ever episodes. So first off, thank you for being here, of course, because um, this course. is just fantastic for having me. Yeah, and. That's the hope with the podcast. And same thing with like shorts and reels and stuff like that. We've tried to make it more modernized. Um, but to go back to your question, one of the funnest things that I get to do, number one is photography. And you even know this. I mean, there's something about going out to an event and you get to see some people doing just 
awesome things. Yeah. Like you as cool a fielder, things. right? You know, you showed me a couple. I mean, there was a photo yeah. you took a couple years back um, of a uh, Lakota picking up off the ground after yeah. getting fueled. We get to capture the experiences that people are having. Right. You know, and so what we most get exp- people don't get to see. Exactly. So and then you get to you get to show it off and tell the story of that specific thing. So that's the number one most fun thing. Um, I think, you know, I kind of alluded to or I showed you a video not too long ago. Of, OK, when I grew up, um, I wanted to see this out of my mill or oh, whatever. Yeah. So being able to now be that person that had grown up watching all these cool things or seeing cool advertisement. Now I'm working in it. So yes, like, sir. okay, how do you make a video? You know? Oh, well, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, YouTube or you, know, you do yeah. that, but I've learned so much from um, people in R&R to people in um, you know, the public affairs detachment here, um, my boss, you know, it, everyone's got something and it's mm-hmm. how you utilize that. And that's another part that I'll kind of allude to this job specifically. Um, our job is relatively similar to, if not similar to customer service, right? Yes. And the North Dakota National Guard is what? Service, right? Mm-hmm. Service to our country, service to our communities, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. With this job, you know, somebody will call me and say, hey, I want you to make a poster for Christmas, mm-hmm. you know? And I'll say, okay, how do I do that? Well, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. But then you yeah, need to get the intent of the person and then they're mm-hmm. going to give you stuff. But then you're starting to really create connections um, full time, but also on the outside too. Um, mm-hmm. A good example with that is like military funeral honors, right? They yep. um, do a mission outside of um, what most people naturally or would like. They do a completely different job than most people. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted us to create a poster for them, and I said, "Fantastic! When's the next time that I can be at one of your trainings or X, Y, and Z?" So I showed up, and we did some staging stuff outside, and actually got them to do a whole entire rifle team. But then I used those photos and then I made, you know, graphic templates to make them Very a poster. Cool. Yeah. So like the being or the best part about this job with anything, no matter how much stress it brings sometimes, yep. I mean, you as a photographer know or, gra- yep. you know, you send something and mm-hmm. they're like, I don't like that. And then they <laughs> send, and then you send it back and you're like, ah, you know? Yep. So, I mean, there's, there's quirks with any job, but mm-hmm. the best part is just a getting able to capture the people that are doing the job that so many people just idle over. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh. Pilots, military funeral honors, um, musicians, or fuelers, anybody in the guard. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to see what you guys do because mm-hmm. I don't get to experience that. And and that's the benefit, I think, with the military. And we both kind of talked about it, is that, yeah, okay, you may start off as a supply person, right? Yep. But throughout your tenure in the military, you're going to experience so many different things and so many different people. Mm-hmm. Um, and just that whole thing is irreplaceable i mean and you it'll never never ever leave your memory Mm -hmm. um so that would probably be the best and then i mean you just get to be around some really cool people i mean heck you and i are in here having a podcast yeah it's uh i mean i know a bunch of people that aren't (laughs) in the guard that would love love your job and your position i got lucky (laughs) yes i know so many people i I show them like you like don't try to kill don't try to kill me (laughs) i'm gonna get kicked out of here i like show them all and like tell them what you do and they're like wow i wish i could and some just you know aren't in don't join can't join but yeah so many people are like wow well and that's i mean even you know you yourself too uh you know it sounds like we're tooting each other's horn here but you know like Okay, you do physical fitness, right? But you also help your, um, you know, you do full-time photography. And then you also do fueling. Like, Mm -hmm. what? (laughs) I mean, come on. You get to do all of that? Yeah, the guard lets me do my part-time thing. Mm -hmm. You got to manage it correctly. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, you're doing three separate things, and you're experiencing three completely different experiences each time. But the best part about it is that each experience that you have in those categories will all correlate to one experience that you have later on, if not in the future, (laughs) with another person. when When I first joined, that was, like, the biggest thing I wanted is, like, to make sure if I was doing something in the military side, do something completely different on the... Um, civilian side like yeah. get as many so you know I, I can't do AI I can't but I can you know definitely fuel up a helicopter and do you know test the fuel I can yeah. do that like a son of a gun <laughs> you know <laughs> well and if you gave me access to some jet fuel I would uh, <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> right. what do you want me to do with this thing <laughs> yeah yeah it's always nice to have it be super diverse um, 
And like I said, that's what it, the, my main goal was wanting to be, you know, and it can be just so random things, but yeah, yeah. just being super diverse in different aspects. Well, and that's the, that's the benefit with this organization too, is that, you know, if you're in the military and you have the opportunity to deploy, you know, mm-hmm. whether, you know, you're a fueler, you might not be a fueler, you know, you could be doing some other completely different mission. They just need somebody to go with. And you just will get to, I mean, even if you are deployed and you get to be a fueler, you're Mm going to meet probably an engineer detachment because they're the ones fixing up the base. And then you're going to end up somehow getting on that detail. If you're like, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) like if you think that your only job is going to be fueling when you're like, you're going to do everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I do photography. But I do so many different things. Sometimes <laughs> I get ended up in the in the print shop, and then I'm doing audio, mm-hmm. or vice versa, vice versa. But I'm similar in your aspect where, yeah, okay, I wanted to do musician. Still want to be a musician, mm-hmm. 100% too. Um, and I still want to do photography. So much so that, I mean, this job actually empowered me to go and create my own um, thing, you know, side mm-hmm. hustle. And now I'm doing that, which is fantastic. Um, so, and that's the benefit is that each tool, and we talked about it, like we said, you know, um, everything experience that you have will eventually get you, uh, get to a specific future experience that you may have, whether that be, you know, becoming the full time, um, AGR down the road, if mm-hmm. that's what your tenure is, you know, or if you want to be a full time personal trainer, or guess what? I'm going to own a, own a PT or, you know, a, 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 a fitness studio, like, why not? You know, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, going back to the college thing, the reason why I would, didn't pursue art or uh, athletic training is because, like, I didn't need a degree to do that. I don't need a degree to do art. I don't need a mm-hmm. degree to do athletic training. I already personal train. I can draw whenever. So, yeah, whatever I want to do, you know, whatever training or whatever degree or whatever anything, you know, I wanted to at least have purpose, you know. Well, that. and that's the benefit too. Is you know, you and I are similar. We both went to college, right? Mm-hmm. And then we decided to go full time military. And you know, everyone's in a different stage in their life, right? Mm-hmm. You'll go to college, and okay, this isn't for me. But you know what? That benefit's not going to leave you. You know, oh, yeah. as long as you did everything that you were supposed to do to get it on, mm-hmm. and then turn it off properly, X, Y, and Z. Like you won't lose that benefit. And mm-hmm. or if you're that person that okay, I work a blue collar job, and I'm happy with what I do you know, art similar. A lot of these younger kids, and I, I say this now too, is that these guys are are like some of the best marketers for themselves because social oh, media has, gosh, yes. has made it. So a lot of, I oh gosh, I think it was, I went to BHS and this kid's making like furniture out of his dad's gra- garage. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Like, what? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, no, I got a business already set up. I don't, I'm, if anything, I'm going to go do marketing, but I want to see where my business takes me first. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And he actually ended up joining the military. Oh, word. And <laughs> like, he's just doing that on the side hustle. Yeah. Or he's doing that on his full time side. But the military is his, you know, his mm-hmm. soldier experience, you know, where he yeah. wants to go do the military stuff. Um, and guess what? He still has all the benefits for college, depending mm-hmm. on what he signed up for. Um, et cetera. And who knows, maybe the MOS, he got gave him a bonus. And I think nowadays the bonus is what? Like 20, 20 grand, 20 yeah. grand, 20 grand. Um, I know when I extended, I, I had gotten a bonus and that was fantastic. So mm-hmm. the benefit, and I always use this for anyone that's like on the fence about joining the military. The first things first is that when you join the military, there should be a reason for doing it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes that's where you got to go, you know, right. and that's your only avenue to get out of wherever you're at in life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know for me specifically, when like the benefits, yeah, they're great and all, whatever, but it was just about bettering myself. And if that makes sense. So now that I'm, you know, 27, you know, like mm-hmm. I have a house, I got a dog, and the whole point behind of it was to just better myself and. You know, I still have opportunities to go to college, X, Y, and Z, but the baseline principles that I wouldn't have had coming out of high or high school mm-hmm. are now here. Okay, right? Yeah. Discipline is one thing. You know, you learn your tendencies eventually, but like the confidence factor, mm-hmm. um, the opportunities factors. You, you when you say build yourself up or set, put yourself in a good place, it's not so much just personally. It's about like, okay, what are the opportunities I got in the future, right? We yeah. talk about the people in the military, the families that we have being in small units. Those people are going to give you opportunities outside the military too. Oh, yeah. So it's about how you take advantage of an opportunity to get yourself up in a, you know, in a future place. And that's the benefit with the military for me is that 
you know, even you now, you know, you're now in this position at recruiting mm-hmm. where marketing is like, okay, well, what you get to do is completely like, I mean, a different, but also mm-hmm. just really cool. Right. I mean, I mean you, you were saying your friends are like, Oh, what the heck? He gets to do that full time. I mean, yeah. same concept. Now you're in that, you're in that place too. So mm-hmm. having that opportunity to just go, I mean, you're going to spend some time and, you know, spend some time getting to where you need to, but mm-hmm. that's the whole point about being in the military is having that diversity to kind of build you up to a place where I'm happy where I'm at now. And I'm just going to like float for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I liked what you said about having a reason during the military. You know, I'm not one to press people, you know, when talking to people about the mm-hmm. yard, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm definitely not one to press if they want to talk, if, you know, if they're interested in other branches, you know, I'm not one to be like, well, why? That's dumb. But you know, North Dakota National Guard is the best National Guard. <laughs> it is, but I, I, I definitely am more open to where, like, you know, you gotta have your own. You know, there was a really good buddy of mine who joined the Marines because like yeah. his grandpa and his dad was in it, and mm-hmm. that was the only reason why. And it's like, I'm not, you, you know, you can't talk him out of that. You know, no, no. Um, but yeah, always having a reason why um, is always what I always tell people too. It's like, like why, why do you want to join? You know, yeah, and it even goes outside of the military. Um, you talk to somebody that wants to get into, um, you know, a doctor or a CNA or mm-hmm. any of that stuff. Like, okay, what do you want to do? Like, what, what's your What's your American dream? Like, what mm-hmm. do you find purpose in? And that's a lot of the things, too, is that I guess that's a good way to summary, summary about it, the military. For it, rather than it being stepping, you're finding a purpose. Yeah. And the experiences that you learn in whatever avenue, mm-hmm. uh, for me, it was the military. I found a purpose yeah. um, in what I enjoy doing. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you're younger, um, you're going to change your idea or you're going to change what you think you want to oh, do yeah. a you million times. You can feel times. a lot lost too, yeah. you know, not knowing what and feeling like, you know, oh, I got to right. figure this out right now. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it especially in today's world, you know, mm-hmm. like you don't have time to, yeah. you know, change. And I think that's the benefit. I use this analogy all the time. You have to jump off a cliff to climb a mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when you talk about purpose and doing something, if you're nervous at all, sometimes that's the right answer is to like, yeah, I mean, I've been the number one thing that puts you back in life is fear and yeah. the fear of not succeeding. Sometimes it's OK to fail. Like, you right. know, if and the best if I'm going to do or if I'm going overseas, right. Mm-hmm. First off, you say overseas to a lot of people, some person that's never deployed or, you know, a young person buck or even somebody that that has deployed and now has a couple of kids or something like that they hear deployment and sometimes it's like oh no (sighs) you Uh know this uh, i'm gonna do it but Mm -hmm. like i'm i'm afraid but the benefit is is in you know you're gonna have experiences and train other people that would have never had those experiences if i wouldn't and i'll tell you even with this job so when I, i saw this job get advertised i was like okay well i've got um some photography background with the mother and father and stuff. I got graphic digital design and audio mm-hmm. stuff with the band and um, with growing up just in BHS and yep. the Career Academy right up north here. Um, it was that I almost didn't apply. I almost did not apply because I didn't think I was qualified. Like I had no, like I was, nope, not happening. Yeah. Not going to be me. And if you didn't apply, I would have gotten your job. Oh, what? <laughs> See, I didn't know that. Well, here we are. Now yep. you got your own. So, well, and that's, and that's the biggest thing too is, is that you know, if, if you don't take mm-hmm. um, advantage of the opportunity or, you know, or put yourself out there, you're not going to go anywhere. So yeah. just jumping off and doing it. And yeah. Whenever I take people to maps uh, where you enter the military, I always ask right when we start, are you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> like I literally always ask them. And then most of the time they say yes, which, you know, I think is a good thing, too. Yeah. Just oh, what you all just said, you know, it's good to be nervous. You know, if you're not going in there nervous, it's like, OK, are you that like excited right. and all that? So but most of the time people are nervous, which is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about in, in as a musician in the band, um, we get asked. Uh, we actually just did our music in schools tour. Um, where the band basically sends out its musical performance team, the rock group, the brass group, or the wind ensemble groups. And uh, we go out and perform for, you know, the local high schools of North mm-hmm. Dakota uh, or elementary pending um, of who we can get in to book. And we had the number one question that was asked is how do you play without any nerves? You know, like, are you mm-hmm. afraid when you mm-hmm. go up and perform? And I'm like, oh, yeah, 100 <laughs> percent all the time. Yeah. But it's no different than like you doing ACFT. You're nervous for that one lift. Well, guess yep. what? I'm going to motivate the heck out of it and I'm going to 
do way better. You know, yeah. using that energy that your body is naturally creating. Yeah. Um, use those endorphins. Har- exactly. <laughs> use the endorphins. <laughs> but harnessing your nervous fear to to actually do something, you know, and that's getting over that obstacle is just. But once you experience it, and you know, and that's the reason why a lot of people stay in. Um, is because mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm getting challenged and it's going to not just be physically, it's going to be mentally, it's going to be, you know, I'm at a senior level now where I'm now making um, decisions that I don't want to have to make, but I have to make them because mm-hmm. my guys are independent of me. And if I mess up, well, guess what? That's not, on my, that's not on them. That's on me. So, but having that nerve, I mean, being put in a position where you have to grow is beneficial for you. And the military is no different. Like, you know, you're going to perform at this level, but you have to continuously be bettering mm-hmm. yourself. If you're not, the military doesn't want you. We like we are the world's best fighting force, no matter right. what branch you're in. Mm-hmm. Like there is a standard and that standard is to be the world's mm-hmm. fighting force. And to any I mean, like that's just the standard right. no matter what. So, um, yeah, that's <laughs> that really that was a great topic. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. that was fantastic. <sighs> uh well, so, okay, well, you asked me what my favorite part about my job is, and now that I know that I competed against you, <laughs> I felt I feel bad. So, like, what is your favorite part about where you're at now? Because I am super proud of you, and I'm also just happy that you are in a position where, you know, all these accumulative things that mm-hmm. you've done in the past and all the things that you've learned in X, Y, and Z have gotten to you now. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about your job? Or, well, not how do you feel about it, but what's the most fun thing that you get to do now? Mm. Most fun thing, I mean, I still do, um, like, go to the recruiters sometimes with, like, uh, their meetups with kids and always being around high schoolers, you know, they can be, you guys can be, you know, a lot at (laughs) some times, but for the most part, like, that's what makes, like, the recruiters love being around them, and I love that, too, you know, talking with them. Um, I know always the events, you know, uh, taking photos at the events, but... um, so that's probably the most fun and the best, but um, I like it to where, because I've had like bad jobs in the past, and mm-hmm. this job's really um, where I can still be myself, you know, still work out a lot, still, yeah. you know, have time for family. I'm really, really religious, so, you know. Oh, can, yeah. Yeah, I can still like be myself while doing my job and having a purpose, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not so much as one thing, it's just the position I'm in and currently going, so. Yeah, well, and that's, and that is the best part. If there's one thing that we want to just find, and I believe this is just finding, well, one is, like we said, purpose. Mm-hmm. Number two, you're like your happy medium. Like, no matter who you meet, you're gonna say hi to Sam, or you're gonna say, you know, see mm-hmm. how I live my life. And, well, right. What the heck? How do you do that? Or I've met people that are just go getters, and they just do. A million things, and you're like, well, how do you keep up? But that's mm-hmm. how they stay. In, that's how they stay sane. You yeah. Know? Um, for me, yep. it's like, all right. Well, I need to go. I want my dog. I want my. You know, like. Yeah. I want to be able to go home to her, but I also want to have like be able to create stuff. But I, again, like you said, religion. You know, mm-hmm. if, if that's your medium, like you need to find your place and how do you manage all of that is yeah. so beneficial because once you do that, dude, you figured out life. Like yeah. once you're like figured out where. You're, mm-hmm. you, know, you know where your line is and you're just going down your lane and like no one's affecting you anyway but once you find that that's what everyone wants and i think yeah. now like you're finally like you're on that path mm-hmm. and now you just gotta now we're on that you know on ramp yeah you know, we're on that on ramp going from 45 <laughs> to now we're going to 75 yeah and then that point you're just coasting you know right yeah i uh i couldn't agree more and biggest thing biggest thing out of everything is like i've always been naturally you know, kind and happy. Mm-hmm. And no matter what job, you know, just always having that same mindset of, you know, just be happy no matter no matter how bad the day is, no matter how stressful it is. You know, always stay kind, you know. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. keep keep your words to your you know, yourself sometimes. Yeah. And um this job's um sometimes, you know, I've had to <laughs> there has been bad days, you know, just like any hey, other job. Day, but yeah. um yeah, no, it uh I can see it more to where I'm happier, and then if people aren't around me, aren't happy, you know, I try to make it happy, lighten yep. the mood, yep. Um, and they, you know, go along with it. So, yeah, it's nice to see that. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, this has been a fantastic podcast. Um, this has been, I mean, first off, just super cool to like 180 from start to finish in our lives. I mean, mm-hmm. and obviously the, we'll keep talking after this. Yeah. Um, but now that you said that, I beat you in a job. I hope you don't hold any grudges <laughs> against me. <laughs> but 
um, overall, dude, like, let's go out, take some photography at a zoo sometime. Like, let's, let's, go. Just, let's go do some fun <laughs> stuff. Yeah, overall, thanks for coming on. This yeah. is fantastic. Thank you. Well, that's all we've got time for today. But hey, if you're listening online and you enjoyed the Guards podcast, feel free to give us a like or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We don't just make a podcast. We take a lot of photos and make a lot of videos of soldiers and airmen doing awesome things in the state of North Dakota. And with that, we'll catch you next time.